Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I jazzed up and personalised my straw bag. First I needed a straw bag, I bought one from eBay but if you already have one at home even better. Then next up is my Yankee candle. I wrap wool around the neck of the candle to get my pom pom loop. I wrapped wool around the base to make my tassel and I even used the lid of the Yankee candle to make my cardboard templates which you'll use to cut down your pom poms to get the perfect circular shape. You also need a plastic needle for threading and attaching your pom-poms, a pair of scissors for cutting down the wool, and then of course you need your wool. I used two different trays, but you could use one or even more if you fancied it. I also monogrammed my bag with the J as you can see here. If you also wish to monogram your bag, you will need some acrylic paint and a paintbrush. Before we can start doing anything with the wool itself, we need to make our two cardboard templates for cutting down and making your pom-poms round. So just take the lid of the Yankee jar, draw around it twice, cut them out and make a hole in the middle of just one of the templates. So, I want you to avoid the extra expense of buying the proper tools that you probably need to make pom-poms and I thought I'm just gonna make do with what I have around the home. So I'm using my Yankee candle. I'll leave out the first little bit of wool so that I don't lose my end when wrapping it round the neck. Then I landed upon 120 wraps I think is my preferred amount for a fluffy pom-pom I did have a few test trials before I started to film I think my first one I did 50 to 60 and oh my gosh they were horrendous they were so thin so floppy they didn't look full at all so here you'll see I wrap it around the neck only of the candle 120 times once I've done that, I will line up the new end with the old end, place my thumb down to keep it steady and trim off so it's roughly the same amount as the first one, like so. Next, I cut off an extra piece to just wrap it around the middle of my loop, like I'll show you in one second, but I just need an extra little bit for that. Remove the lid off the Yankee Candle and gently ease off your wool from around the neck, then I shall pull it taut just to make sure I still have my shape and lay it across the piece of wool I just cut so that it's in the middle. So the string will go through the middle of my loop. It's time for our four knots. So I do one first that's facing me, pulling it as tight as possible. Flip you all over to face the other direction. Give it one good singular knot, then flip it back again till you're facing your very first side and do a double knot to finish. It should now look like a wool looking bow tie. So then just cut the loops on either end, opening them up and giving them a good shake out. Taking the two pieces of wool that were knotted around the middle of your loops, they now themselves need to be looped over to go through the first piece of cardboard that we made a hole in the middle of. Pull it as taut as you can without ripping the card. Fan out the wool on the opposite side there might be loops that you missed from cutting before, you can cut those now. You just want it to be as smooth all the way around and spread out evenly. Then take your other disc and lay that in the middle. Keep the extra wool that you just pulled through away because you don't want to cut that. Get your scissors and cut off all of the wool sticking out of your pom-pom sandwich. Obviously the sharper your scissors are, the easier this is going to be for you. But just take your time, don't rush. Don't cut into the cardboard discs, just everything that sticks out, chop it off. So this is the fiddly bit. You need to find the centre of your pom-pom, the bit that has the wool knotted around it, and give the pom-pom a 90 degree or a quarter turn. Because if you left it as it is right now, it's not actually a circle. It's more of a rugby ball type shape, which isn't what we're going for. So give it a quarter or 90 degree turn. And you can either loop it back through the centre of your disc or just fold it over the edge. On this one, I've looped it back through the disc. You can't pull it taut because it will flip back round to the same position. You need to just gently loop it through the disc. And hold it down so that it does stay that 90 degree turned round if that if that makes any sense then put your other disc back on the top and re-trim your edges 
Once I'm done trimming, I'll remove the disc and give the pom-pom a good old shake out. This is the time to check for any stray long pieces that might need a trim before I grab my plastic needle. The needle and the wool were the only two things I bought from the online craft shop. I'll take one of my two long wool pieces, thread it through my plastic needle, then count down on the straw pattern. I think it was three or four lines. I will find out two pieces of straw to loop my needle and my one side of string through. This is what I will then tie a knot with my wool around so it will attach to my bag. It might be easier to show you than try and explain that to you. That was a bit complicated. I'm sorry. <laughs> I double knot my pom-poms onto my bag so I know they're fully secure. Then I will take both pieces of my wool to the top, bottom or side of my pom-pom. Then trim them to be the same length as the other pieces. Then there we go. Ta-da! We have our beautiful pom-pom attached to our summer straw bag. So I just wanted to quickly show you what to do. Just in case for whatever reason you accidentally cut off your two long pieces of wool that you use to attach your pom-pom to your bag. Just take another long piece of wool and thread it through your plastic needle. You then need to find the centre of the pom-pom that you are able to push the needle through. It looks like a tiny wormhole. If you were to stretch it out you'd be able to see through. But obviously we've tied ours very tight so it is a small hole and may take you a minute to find it. Um, once you've threaded it all the way through, the pom-pom would be free to slide up and down the wall without falling off. That's when you know you've threaded it through the right place. Then just bring your two pieces of wool together to make a double knot so it's fully secure, moving all the small pieces of wool out the way because we don't want to lose any of our bulk at all. Then just attach to the bag as normal. I've taken my cardboard templates and I'm cutting them down to be about a third of the size that they were before because I'm now going to make myself a bag charm. I'm also using two of the pom-poms that I'd had a practice on but they didn't have enough rotations so they weren't very full. So I'll be using my trial run pom-poms and cutting them down to the new smaller template size so they'll look much fuller. As you can see here, I'll now do the other one as well. I'm now going to make the tassel for the bottom of my bag charm. I'll do this by tying the two different shades of pink wool together and then wrapping them around the base of my Yankee candle. I will do this 60 times until my loop is nice and thick. Then I shall gently remove my loop from the base of my candle, cut a long piece of wool, thread it through my loop and tightly tie it together. I do a double knot so it's nice and secure. To separate my tassel head from the skirt of my tassel, I'll take another piece of wool and about a thumb's distance down from the top, I will wrap it round once or twice, then pull tight and double knot. Now it's cutting time, so flip your tassel over and cut through all of the loops. Give the tassel a good shake and brush through to make sure it's not tangled and you have missed no loops. Then pull taut so you can cut a nice blunt edge at the end. I now take my two long pieces of wool and thread them both through the plastic needle as it is now time to attach the pom-poms. And to do this you need to find the centre again, that small wormhole looking circle. That's what the needle needs to go through so they are fully and securely attached to the tassel. And there you go, the bag charm is finished. You could add as many pom-poms as you like but this bag isn't very tall so I've just gone with one tassel and two pom-poms. I've attached mine to a spare keyring loop and then tied it on that way but you could always just knot your tassel straight onto the bag, it really is up to you. So you could always just stop here because the bag does look nice as it is but on Pinterest I've seen quite a few of the straw bags being monogrammed and I always think they look much nicer in my opinion. So I'm just cutting out a thin J stencil. Stencil. <laughs> because once I draw around it with my felt tip pen it will naturally start to look thicker and then also when I paint the middle so that it's a full block letter that will also thicken it up even more so. So I only need to keep my actual stencil of the letter quite small. Then I'm drawing around with just a standard felt tip pen. It's There's nothing special about the pen, it's not a sharpie, just a pink 
felty because that's what I planned to paint with it being pink. I also used acrylic paint to paint onto my bag. I did do a little bit of googling um, and obviously read the people that had put on a description with their Pinterest photos. They all mentioned that they'd been using acrylic paint to paint onto the straw bags. So thankfully my son has an acrylic paint set from school projects so I just borrowed the white and the, the white and the red and made myself a shade of pink I quite liked and then just simply painted onto the bag. I then sat it on my windowsill in the sunshine to dry and gave it another coat off camera and then it was it was done. And there we have it guys, that's our finished bag. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.